I want to start with you first. Beautiful Disaster was your first big foray into comedy. And this in the sequel, you really double down on that and also get to incorporate a lot of physical humor. How much fun was that for you? And what have you learned about your craft being a part of both projects? Um, yeah, comedy really scared me. Uh, still does scare me. I think it's a lot harder to make someone laugh than than cry. Um, laughter is so specific and in the timing and everything um, is so formulaic. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I mean, it was kind of fun to double down and thank God I trust trust um, Roger and Dylan and the cast around me to kind of have faith in what I was doing because I had no idea if it was working or not. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, ultimately, like I, I definitely built that trust muscle within myself to know that I can go big and silly and um, hopefully it works. I guess we'll we'll find out. <laughs> it definitely worked. And Dylan, you've worked with Roger now on three films. How's that trust and the behind the scene antics translated into your performance on screen and the creative decisions that you made throughout your portrayal of Travis? I mean, I think that the more you work together with anyone, the more you create a shorthand to create something that's really fun on set. Roger and I have similar senses of humor, so um, I know if I'm going to get a laugh out of him, I know how to do it. And if he's going to get a laugh out of me, we can, he can just suggest it and we know exactly where to take it. Even in ADR, same thing. Like I, I, It's been wonderful, and I'm blessed to work with people again and again. That's like part of my favorite part about this job is because mm -hmm. the more you work with people, uh, the easier it becomes to work with them. And so that's something that I, I relish, actually. The trust translates on screen as well. And Ginny, it was really important to Roger that you all had the freedom to play and bring yourselves to these characters. As you step back into Abby's shoes, was there an aspect of her that you were excited to dive deeper into? And is there a scene that was improvised that made the final cut that you're really excited for audiences to see? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think it was fun for me on the first movie. Dylan got to do a lot of the physical training and stuff like that. And in this movie, I was going to be in a swimsuit for most of it. So I worked with the same trainer Dylan worked with on the first film and um, was on a diet regimen and working out mm. six times a week and doing a pretty intense training schedule. So that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, that was a real treat for me. Um, and it was fun to do some of the fighting myself. Dylan got to do so much of it in the first film and in the second as well. But it was fun for me to step into the ring and get an opportunity to do some of like the fight scenes too. Yeah. What was your first cheat meal after you finished filming? Ooh, probably McDonald's. It's always McDonald's. All Big roads McDonald's lead back guy. to McDonald's for me. Yeah. It's always McDonald's. <laughs> Big McDonald's gal this yeah. one. And then, Dylan, you know, another exciting thing about this sequel is that you're able to dive deeper into existing relationships that weren't as prevalent in that first film. And that blossom blossoming relationship and friendship between Travis and America really helps ground your character. What was it like getting to collaborate with Libe in this film, explore that dynamic, dynamic which feels so paramount to your character? Well, it's great. I love Libe. I mean, it's funny because in most of the first movie, we barely have a scene together. And then in the yeah. second one, it was the first time we really got to talk to each other, which actually I'm pretty sure Libe's character America says in the movie, which is, have we mm -hmm. ever actually talked like this? And, and uh, that was fun because so much of what you don't see is the four of us hanging out on the weekends or hanging out on set or waiting for the other scene to get done while we all hang out. And so... Uh, it was nice to have that kind of groundedness come to. And I think through that scene, Abby and Travis are going to get closer too. And I think that that's kind of the joy of that scene in general. So, yeah. And then, Ginny, what's so great about this film is that you're able to strike that balance between comedy and those really heartfelt moments, which is kind of your bread and butter. And these two characters have very different journeys about growing up and not running away. Can you talk a little bit about that collaboration with Roger and finding those moments to highlight that contrast and how different is the preparation for those types of scenes? Well, I think Roger's really great at knowing, okay, if we're going to go this hard in comedy, we need to balance it out with some grounded, genuine moments as well. So it was important to us, if we're going to go so hard and so slapstick, we need to have some actual emotion in here too. Otherwise, what are we actually saying with this film? Mm -hmm. um, so he was really great. And for me, it's, you know, it's definitely um, a, a different 
I'll screw around all day and have fun on set. But if it's a dramatic scene, it's kind of a little bit of a more private preparation for something like that. Um, but it was really fun and it was great to be able to kind of strike the balance of both. And I think a lot of Judd Apatow movies do that really well and they're quite timeless because they can kind of hit all those different beats. And I think we were trying to have a good balance of both in this film. Mm. You accomplished that. And Dylan, some of the things that these characters say are completely unhinged in the best possible way. Was that process like finding how far you can push this dialogue? And was there a line that one of your co-stars threw at you that even surprised you? Sheesh, unhinged dialogue. Um, I don't know, I can't name any specific moment off the top of my head, but uh, I do think that is like a little more of the nature of this movie rather mm -hmm. than the first one, is we're unhinging a little bit to add more fun and more stress to the idea of being married so young and kind of making it a vaudevillian exercise in that. Um, so I can't think of any one line. I, I just know that Stephen Bauer, his improv was so wild and fun anyway that we had a great time working with him on set because every time he would improv, it would just be a riot. On the last time that we spoke, we learned that Ginny had a better wiki feet rating than you, Dylan, and that you're not a potato <laughs> yeah. guy. As the two of you reunited for this project, were there any new discoveries you made about each other? Um, every new discovery that Ginny has ever told me is one of the most horrifying things I've ever heard. Of <laughs> I, I generally could never share this in an interview. We um, both have been playing Baldur's Gate. That is something that we did do. Over That's the Rider Strike, we both yeah, played Baldur's Gate. Yeah, great video game if you haven't played. We both are Baldur's Gate people. That's true. That is true. Have I learned anything else weird about you? Well, okay, you would have learned how good my house was in The Sims 4 had you downloaded it furnished like I asked you I to. didn't know how to download He sent me, he texted me out of the blue and was like, you got to check out my Sims house. It's so sick. So I downloaded it as a good friend to check out your house. Was it my fault it did not come furnished? Basically, she downloaded the shell of it. So, and I will say, for the record, I did admire how you were decorating it. And you're like, what is this room most like? I thought yeah. that was really cool. I was trying to honor his vision because the, the, <laughs> there was this big ass bathroom that was half the size of the house. Dude, I'm going to show you when I get home today. I'm going to text Please, you a picture I of that bathroom. And you're going to be like, wow, that's a I want to see the whole house because I was going a certain direction. And I want to see if that was the direction okay. you went. I'll send it to you as soon as I get back.